Uh, thanks. That's really nice of you. Um, I am Canadian. Uh, that's that country above America, also known as uh, America's Hat. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about gradients and box shadow. This is going to be really quick. For those of you who know, these are two concepts in CSS that allow you to do pretty things. So if you take a canonical example of what C CSS might look like when you're working with gradients, it might look like something like this. Now, of course, us being web devs, when we start moving to other fields, such as IE, things get a little bit more interesting. Uh, I was at Microsoft for six years where I did evangelize platforms like Internet Explorer, and so it saddened me to say that when we go to this platform, we see the result of something like this. This is the way in which we did things in the old days. Now with IE9 and IE10, we can now do things a little bit more safely and sanely. Of course, that leads us to inevitable conclusions. So now we have this concept as a box shadow, which allows us to draw these pretty little uh, gradients and, and nice little things around elements on our page. Very simple concept allowing us to note the size and width and color of various elements that are on our page and basically putting those elements around. As a refrain or bottom uh, up front, number one, box shadow is fun and simple. Number two, gradients are fun and tricky uh, and more browsers obviously lead to more problems. On April 20th, 2011, last year, a gentleman by the name of Doug Avery wrote an article entitled 39 Ridiculous Things You Can Do With CSS3 Box Shadows. If you haven't seen this page, it looks something like this. And in fact, let me show you that now. If you navigate to his blog post, it will look something like this. And in fact, the demo for it uh, allows you to take a variety of elements that are LIs, spans, and other types of elements and do interesting things with them. As you can see here, as I hover over this element here, you'll notice we get this nice effect occurring. Uh, this is all done using CSS, gradients, and box shadow. Um, we have all other types of elements as well, which you've nicknamed. Stadium, little guy, soft focus, slip, etc. Uh, the doing it wrong is a very popular one in my event. Of course, these ones can range and vary accordingly. So you get some very nice, pretty effects. And again, all this is being done in markup with spans and LIs. So you have things like the good girl, color theist, uh, googly eyes and others. Now, of course, we can take advantage of things like pseudo elements and do interesting effects with the combination of that and JavaScript. So you can see here we get some nice effects occurring to this. We have things like the bouncer, the pulse, the orbiter, and, and rip root. Of course, we can also do events that key on various uh, mouse interactions. So as we hover over these elements, you can see we get this a fade uh, appearing, the shy guy, another one is the dimmer switch. I like that one. And then other ones like the wipeout. And then finally, to complete matters, we have other types of ones like the planetarium, dark side, and others. The point of this is to basically show you that box shadows actually, uh, when, co when combined with radius, provide a really nice experience and allow you to theme and customize these things. Now, the challenge with this, of course, is getting these things right. And I, being a Microsoft guy at the time, thought, hmm, might be interesting to see if we can get this to work on IE9. It didn't. Uh, <laughs> and I won't go into reasons for that. Shall remain nameless. Uh, but I did spend the time of converting some of these things into uh, another operating system known as Windows 8. So here in Windows 8, uh, through the magic of software, we've been able to navigate whisk away to Windows 8. This is IE 10 running in, the co in a Parallels VM, and we have similar sort of mechanisms here where we can actually theme and style these accordingly. Looking at the source code for this quickly, um, very simple to actually make these things work. It is a lot of prefixes and gobbledygook, but at the bottom, the bottom line up front is basically that we can actually do very interesting transformations and effects against these. Looking at the very simple example where we're targeting IE, we're just using a dash MS extension, and we can now finally use things like box shadow and text shadow, which is now supported. So, in conclusion, Conversions are simple. So if you're actually looking at moving uh, and getting this cross-browser supported, we do have Box Shadow and IE9. We have Gradients on IE10. We have a simple conversion process. Of course, that also translates to things like border radius and gradients. The challenge here, of course, is getting this to work across browsers. So as I said in my original, the refrain, Box Shadow is fun and simple. Gradients are fun but tricky. And more browsers obviously alleviates a lot of problems. We can get rid of that now because we have a great deal of tools from folks like John Alsop and others that you can use to actually see how this all hangs together. So by way of example, we can jump over to a, s a number of simple tools. This is the one that was provided by the IE team. Uh, there are many others out there that you can go check out. If you want to take a look at the source code for this, Paul Iris of Google has published this to GitHub. You can go ahead and check this out for yourself.
And with that, I am done. Thank you very much. You need to take the boy out.